So thank you for giving me the opportunity today to talk about my stance that all men with prostate cancer, including those with low risk disease, considering active surveillance, as well as those with high risk disease newly diagnosed, um, should undergo genetic testing, as well as all patients with advanced metastatic disease as well. So when we get genetic testing or decide to get genetic testing for prostate cancer, we have to understand its implications at various stages of prostate cancer decision-making processes. And this goes from screening to the diagnosis of locally uh, localized disease to advanced disease. But we also have to remember that genetic assessment uh, should also be considered when we know someone has a uh, genetic mutation that we should use that information to help better counsel their family members. Now today in particular, I'd like to talk about how genetic testing should be applied toward those with localized prostate cancer, whether low or high risk disease, as those with advanced prostate uh, cancer uh, with metastases. So when we order genetic testing from many available companies these days, and we specifically order a prostate uh, test, which is a multi-gene panel, this typically includes 14 genes uh, that have been associated with prostate cancer. Now, most of these genes, I said, have been implicated somewhat in hereditary prostate cancer, although even that's variable, and others have been associated with aggressive disease. But it's important to understand when you get a panel of rare pathogenic mutation assessment, um, a panel of genes for prostate cancer, we have to understand their utility in uh, or their application for determining a patient's susceptibility, aggressiveness, and or disease response. And again, when, we, when I talk about genetic testing, I always say we need to do it with intention. So there's going to be various panels or various genes uh, among that panel that we get that are gonna be more applicable for patients who are under, uh, undergoing screening. So these are unaffected men undergoing screening. There's gonna be other genes uh, that are relevant for those who are newly diagnosed with either localized low grade or low risk disease or localized uh, high grade disease. And there's gonna be yet other panels uh, of genes that we should look at are for those men who have or advanced metastatic prostate cancer. And so to start here is that it would be reasonable when patients are newly diagnosed with low risk disease and are considering active surveillance, if we do genetic testing and we find that there's a genetic variant or mutation that's associated with an increased risk of aggressive disease, then maybe they're not the best candidate for active surveillance or watchful waiting. And so strong consideration uh, to avoid those strategies should be taken. However, if they have these mutations, then definitive treatment with either surgery or radiation should be considered early. And we should have potential caution with focal therapies that are considered more experimental. And so what's the data behind a lot of this? There certainly have been many studies, uh, but we uh, at North Shore recently collaborated with Johns Hopkins, and uh, we tried to evaluate a panel of over 150 genes, mostly in the DNA repair genes, and looked at the frequencies of these mutations in men with low risk and high risk disease. And specifically, there were certain genes, including ATM, BRCA2, and MSH2, that increased the risk of developing high-grade disease. And even more impressively is, not only were they increased the risk of high-grade disease, but they were preferential, um, had increased significantly higher frequencies among men with Gleason grade group 5 versus even grade group 4 uh, prostate cancer. As an example, if you looked at ATM, that uh, increased almost a sixfold the risk of having grade group five disease over grade group four, suggesting that these mutations give rise spontaneously to higher grade tumors versus low grade tumors, some of the worst that we know. So if you have patients like that, would they be good candidates for active surveillance? And when we look at our uh, active surveillance series, again, this is uh, looked at two active surveillance cohorts, one from North Shore, one from Johns Hopkins. And we looked at how well men did with some of these mutations over time in active surveillance. And not unexpectedly, these men uh, were recategorized, did worse in active surveillance, meaning if you had a, a panel of either BRCA1, 2, or an ATM mutation, 
they were significantly more likely to be upgraded over time. And if you look as an example, it's BRCA2, there was almost a five-fold higher risk of being upgraded and upgraded from a Gleason grade group six to a Gleason grade group three or higher over time. Again, supporting that these mutations generally give rise to the most aggressive type of cancers that we know of. And based on this, because there's such a high likelihood of failing and high likelihood of failing with disease that usually requires ultimately multimodal or subsequent therapies that we should not uh, enroll them in active surveillance. So what if you're diagnosed instead of a low risk disease, but a high risk disease, then should we order genetic testing? My stance is yes, because information about this can help guide not only the type of treatment we want to be as aggressive as possible in consideration of multimodal therapy. And we should have stronger consideration if you are a, mut a mutation carrier uh, for giving adjuvant therapy or early salvage therapy. Again, what is the data that supports this? And if we look, this is a uh, recent uh, meta-analysis that um, compiles all the studies that have been done in the literature of looking at those who developed, ultimately went on to develop metastatic prostate cancer versus those who had only localized prostate cancer. And if you look, whether you are an ATM carrier or BRCA2, CHECK2 or PALB2 carrier, these all imparted significantly higher risks of going on to develop metastatic prostate cancer. And if you know that information, that a patients are more uh, at higher risk, you are likely to treat them more aggressively uh, because of that risk. And certainly when you look at similar panels of, um, of gene mutations, these same type of uh, mutations do impart increased risk of lethal disease. And again, this is one of our studies in collaboration with Hopkins, but many other studies have supported this, that these men with the same mutations not are only increased risk of aggressive prostate cancer and dying specifically from prostate cancer, but they tend to die at an earlier age. So it's in the patient's best interest to be as aggressive as you can with this. And knowledge of that information at the time of diagnosis is often useful uh, for planning their treatment outcome. And finally, and I think the easiest, uh, is genetic testing is very applicable to those who have metastatic prostate cancer. So again, if we fail and we don't uh, diagnose uh, or do genetic testing along the way, that certainly by the time they have metastatic cancer, this information can be used to help guide treatment. And because we do know that uh, if you have many of these mutations, specifically in the DNA repair genes or the mismatch repair gene pathways, that they may be more responsive to certain uh, chemo or immunotherapies. And while this slide is very selective, uh, there are many studies now, randomized prospective trials, that have demonstrated the effectiveness of PARP inhibitors to certain DNA repair gene mutations. As such, this has now received FDA approval, and it is in our guidelines that we should be uh, getting genetic testing at this stage. And certainly uh, more uh, on the cutting edge here is that men with mismatch repair gene mutations or within their tumor, they demonstrate uh, microsatellite uh, instability, that these patients may be more responsive to immunotherapy. And so knowledge of this genetic testing at the time of diagnosis of metastatic disease would be useful to help guide their therapy as well. So in summary, I do take the stance that germline genetic testing should be considered in all stages of prostate cancer decision-making from screening to localized to advanced prostate cancer. And again, specific mutations that do impart more aggressive disease. Uh, if they, patients have these, active surveillance or watchful waiting should likely be avoided. These mutation status should uh, is be also useful for men who have high-risk disease to help guide uh, their treatment strategies. And certainly we're all familiar with uh, knowledge of this uh, in patients with advanced prostate cancer because it can dictate uh, their response to different treatments. So thank you so much for that opportunity and look forward to talking about this more.